bike. So that entire time I had no sound. Glad Alicia told me if anybody else was live, I apologize for that. Had to click another button in this software I'm using. So now we're back at it. Thank you for joining again if you are here for the second time or for the first time. Uh, tonight we're talking about tracking quality at bats. So Alicia originally was not supposed to be around because she was supposed to have games and Mother Nature decided she didn't agree. So she is here in the comments to answer any questions you may have as well. Um, but I had this all set up in a way that I can't bring her on so we're just going to go with this for now. So let's get started talking about quality bats. So we, I think I've all heard about this term by now and I think the most important thing is to distinguish why they're important. So traditional stats are great, but a lot of the things that go into them are out of our control. So from a sports psych standpoint, that's a big problem. So for instance, if you put a lot of weight into your batting average and it makes you feel good or bad and that hard line drive you hit doesn't count for it, it's not going to make you feel good. And now you're not, you're worried or upset about a line drive or on the flip side, you get a bloop in and just because it didn't feel great, you're not happy about that either. So it's lose-lose. Whereas quality at bats focus on things that are within your control. So if you square the ball up, you sacrifice someone over or you get an RBI regardless of type of hit. So these are the types of things that we feel are quality at bats. So I did all this with my team and then I will share Alicia's story. Hi, she's here. Um, I'll share Alicia's story with how she implemented with her team. So some really good tactics for you coming up. But let me show you first what we consider a quality at bat. You guys can change these if you want. Just make sure it's something that's within your player's control. So for pitchers, a quality at bat is getting the batter to ground out, pop up, hit a weak line drive, or strike out. So basically you're trying to get them to miss hit. What's not a quality of bat is hard contact, a walk, or a hit by pitch. If you're putting someone on base or allowing them to square up the ball, that is not a quality of bat. Um, we were trying to implement this um, on the team I was coaching and we had a situation where they're like, uh, coach, I don't know how to score a sacrifice bunt because the bunt had nothing to do with what the pitcher was supposed to be doing, but they still got it down. So we decided a bunt was a wash, just like a walk is a wash for hitters in regular stats. That's what we decided here. So we're just not going to count it. Kudos to the batter for getting that bunt down. Another weird situation um, of pitchers was if it was a really good pitch and the batter hit it anyway. So I called that an accidental hit. <laughs> like, hey, she golfed it out of the park. That's not the pitcher's fault. That also should be a wash. So again, it needs to be something that's within the pitcher's control. So if she throws a rise ball at the girl's face and she hits it out of the park, no big deal. It's not your fault. You did your job and got it out of the zone. But for hitters, it's kind of opposite. So a quality bat for them is anything hard contact, a walk or hit by pitch, a sacrifice, bunt, fly, or hit, um, like hitting it to the right side with a runner on second less than two outs, um, or a bunt or slap for a hit. So slappers, this counts for you. Doesn't matter if you didn't get, if you get on base, that counts. Um, and then RBI or an eight pitch at bat. All these things are quality at bats because they help your team. Even if you don't get on base or score a run, these are things that are going to give the team momentum and you have control over. So for hitters, a non-quality at bat is a grounder, just a regular grounder, not even just a dink, but like just a regular grounder. If it's a hard grounder, it is a screaming short hop to either your corners or your pitcher, or it is a really hard two bouncer to your middle infielder. Anything that takes more bounces than that is not a hard hit ground ball. Be harder on your players than they think because, and tell them that. Say like, I'm gonna hold you to a really high standard. It's a good thing. That way when they do crush the ball, they know it's for sure a quality of bat. Um, also weak line drive or strike out. Oh, and pop up. So all those things do not count as quality of bat. Um, but for the hitters, the wash is the accidental hit. So I kind of want to give you credit for getting on base, but if you hit it off the handle and it just happened to go the right way or someone made an error, I guess that wouldn't be a hit. 
but I want you to celebrate being on base, but it doesn't count as a quality of bat because you can square it up next time. You got lucky. So we'll take it as a win for the team, but not a quality of bat. So, Alicia, if you have any other ideas for quality of bats, feel free to add them there or anybody else. As I go on, so the next piece I want to talk about, actually before I get to this, let's look at some chart examples. So, here is the pitching chart. I will link to all of these in the post. Um, so I will give you these charts to fill out yourselves and then you can look on here for the examples. Um, but here, so I start always, always write the opponent because I always go back and forget who we've played. Um, and then you start from the top left corner. I always put the player's number in there. So number three was their leadoff and then number 12 and then number one and go through that way. So the leadoff batter, it was nobody on, nobody out. That's what zero, zero is. And she struck out. That's the quality of bat. I circle it, make it a big circle and make it obvious. I also have that section for notes. So you can write down anything that you want to tell the batters, anything about the pitcher, anything you see in that bat. Just a quick note there. Keep everything in one place. <laughs> uh, next batter, she gets up nobody on one out and she pops out to the catcher. And you learned, okay, she's not good at inside pitches, jam her in. So that's the note I had there. Then the third hitter, number one comes up, nobody on two outs. It's a hard ground ball to third baseman, and we got the out, but it was hit really hard. So that's not a quality at bat. And then also next time give her a change up. So that's the end of the inning. I always signify that with the big, thick blue line. Um, it's just easier to keep track of. Um, and then you start the next inning, you just right where you left off. So go through a couple innings, note uh, a couple batters later that the bunt was a wash. So any sacrifice bunt, or even a sneaky bunt, that's a wash, just scratch that out. So that'll come into play later when you're telling the scores to the right there. So then go through, She, the girl hit a hard line drive to the eight nine hole, um, scored a run, and then after that hit a ground ball, and then a strikeout, so got out of the inning. But then we go up and uh, maybe a puller. So she gave up a home run and you pull her. I want to have the pitchers on the same sheet so it's easier to track later and easier to just keep going. But I draw that big line again to signify when our other pitcher came in. So then we track them from there, keep circling the quality at bats, and then finish out the game. So there should be, there was always enough boxes. And if there's a rare occasion where you go extra innings or you need extra boxes, just pull out another sheet. So, when you're done with that, at the end of the game, don't try to do it between games or that kind of thing, it's just too much, or have somebody else tally it. Uh, total number of at-bats, so for Erin, there were 11 batters, but there was one wash. So out of 10 at-bats, she had five quality at-bats, which is a pretty good day, 500, but because of the way it was, apparently I wanted to pull her. Um, this is just an example. And then you check, she had... She had four hard hits, one ground ball, two fly balls, a couple strikeouts, a walk, and that one wash. So you can start to see here what the trends are. So let's look now at the hitting chart. So same idea, I'll write all the players out, write the whole batting lineup beforehand. There are nine slots. Um, if I subbed anyone in, I would just draw a thick line and continue along their row. Um, and then each column, we go down this way, this time. So Aaron started, nobody on, nobody out, hits line drive, gets a single. I would write 1B, 2B <laughs> for if they actually got a hit. And then Nora came up, um, went around one, no outs, and she bunted. I like to write where they hit and bunted too, just for more information. It's just one more number, <laughs> so why not? And then we go down the line from there and we'll say Kennedy was the last one. She had a hard line drive to center field, but she was the last out. So draw that thick line and continue going down. And then as you get through the lineup again, you go back to the top and go down that way. So at the end of this, you'll be able to look across at how many at-bats Aaron had and how many at-bats Nori had and further down. One more note is I like to know who pitched. Uh, this would be especially helpful if you play the same pitcher again. So I jot in that little corner again, the pitcher's number and say the pitcher's changed after the first inning. <laughs> We're really quick to pull our pitchers in this example. Um, Cause I didn't want to write out seven innings. That's the honest thing. So 
Second inning, number 22 comes in, and that way we know who faced whom. Or if they're coming up for a third time against the same, same pitcher, that's also helpful to know. So those are our charts. Once you have all those in order, let's look at how to actually track them. So let's start with these hitter quality of bats. So these are examples for you. I um, have a copy template for you that you guys can get on the website. So if you go there and download that, all these are blank for you and ready for you to fill in for your own team. So you just go through here, these are totals, but if you go hitter by hitter, it'll show you each game. So game one against Franklin, this batter went over two. So we'll say Andrea, and then it can show you, she didn't get any of these quality of bats. So I guess she probably grounded out. <laughs> but then it goes through here. So again, you can see trends with, oh man, look at all this hard contact they're getting. Maybe later in the season, it's dropping off. Or maybe they have a ton of walks here. So you can see these trends. Maybe they have a bunch of strikeouts. But this helps the individuals see how they're doing. For hitting a great quality bat percentage is 500. So two out of four at bats, if you're doing something productive for the team, whether it be getting on base, hitting it hard, uh, sacrificing a runner over, that is going to produce runs for your team and going to make an impact. So 500 is what we talk about being the goal here. Now when you get back to totals, you can see each individual, it's an order, um, the same order as here. And then you can see the totals down here. Woo, this thing scrolls way too fast, there we go. Um, so 357 at this point in the season, lower than we want it to be, but hey, we can <laughs> get it up to that 500. But then from there, don't mess with anything on this sheet. You can copy this whole chart into this sort section. Copy it here and then you can sort based on quality of bat percentage, number of hard contact, number of bunts, number of bats, all that kind of good stuff. So don't mess with anything on this page, do it on the sort. I have notes for you there as well. So you also have a section for games and practice. So you can track quality bats in practice to help you prepare for games and give the girls even more information about how they're doing. And then pitcher quality of bats, very similar. I have it on your setup for four pitchers if you're so fortunate. Um, but here we had the three, so this game out of the 20, 20, 25 quality of bats out of 30 at bats, so that was a great game. You can see all that kind of stuff. And then totals for all three pitchers. Again, copy here, and then you can take it to the sort page and sort by quality of bats. I accidentally included totals. <laughs> you can do it where it doesn't include those but you can see pitcher number one is leading. So if you need this to help with lineups or just to give players some more feedback, I don't like to show players all of them unless they ask. If they're good with or with looking at stats and they can handle it and not overanalyze it or overthink it, fine. But usually it's just helpful to get positive information. Like, look, you have a 734 quality bat percentage. For pitchers, 750 is amazing. So if you're getting the hitters to miss hit or get out 75% of the time, you are doing a fantastic job. So it's more showing them that overall perspective of how they're doing. You can use it for that. Mostly it's for coach information. So again, you guys have this um, chart in, you have access to it. If you signed up for the emails, you'll get it to your inbox. And if you go to the website, the link is in the description here then you can uh, you can also just grab it there and sign up. So thank you guys. I'm going to pop over and make sure I have. If anybody has any questions, post them below. Um, if you have anything that comes up afterward or you're watching this um, on repeat instead of live, feel free to comment, ask any questions you have, whether it be about filling out the charts or deciding what qualifies as a quality at bat. Ask us. We'd be happy to let you know. Um, before we go though, another idea from Alicia, she just told me before this, um, what her team did was instead of having the coach track all these numbers specifically, 
they had the girls come in and on a whiteboard after they had bet, they would tally whether it was a quality of bet. So they had the conversation beforehand of what constitutes quality of bet, and then they come in and they have to say it. I think this is awesome because it gets them to pay attention to like whether or not it was quality. So they come in and even if they don't feel good about, I guess, lining out and ending the inning, when they write up there that yes, it was a quality at bat, that is awesome. Or if you switch it to the pitchers, it's easier to do with hitters at first, but you need to do it with pitchers too. It's just, you'll have to help them track because there's a lot going on for them to remember everything between half innings. But then if they come in and see, okay, well I faced six batters and it felt terrible because you don't want to stay out there for six batters in a while, but look at all these quality at bats I got. Okay, I'm doing my job. We just need to put a few things together. Maybe it was one mishap on defense. Maybe it was one lucky hit or accidental hit. So just making sure they can see that and have that visual in the dugout right there is awesome. And she tracked all the positive ones. You don't, no need to, don't worry about like, oh, not a quality of bat. Tra tally the positive ones. That's what you need to focus on. Everyone knows when you don't do well. Everyone knows. Oh, yes. And it focuses on the process. Thank you. Um, that's the main point of quality of bats is, okay, that was the outcome, but was the process good? You have control over that. So I love that activity. Thank you for that, Alicia. So I don't see anybody else on here. Thank you for watching. And if you guys uh, wanna come back tomorrow, we'll be talking about how to get to know your players better with some specific strategies for getting to know their personality, their strengths and weaknesses, and what they need from you as a coach in that specific coach-athlete interaction. So come back tomorrow at eight and we'll have Alicia, we'll have her back on camera and uh, we'll see you then. Thank you everybody for joining.